Hello again. Today we're going to be building on what we learned previously about direct variation and we're going to talk about what happens when some of the variables in direct variation have powers or exponents in them. So let's get started. Sometimes uh, there are powers of variables that um, are directly proportional. So y could be raised to some exponent m, x could be raised to a different exponent or the same exponent, but just in case we'll call it n. And when I divide those, I get that uh, constant of proportionality, which we call k every time. For every x and y, m and n are also constants. Uh, those exponents are constants. So let's look at an example. We know that the area of a circle is pi times the radius squared. Um, and since r has an exponent to it, um, then I can say that area is directly proportional to the square of the radius because area divided by the radius squared is always that constant pi. So for example, let's suppose that I knew that y was proportional to x squared. What would happen to y if x was tripled? And what would happen to x if y was multiplied by four? So I just wanna talk about what would happen in those relationships. So if y is proportional to x squared, then we can write that the first y over the first x squared is equal to the second y over the second x squared. All right, so I'm just rewriting that there because I'm going to answer the first question that talks about what's going to happen to y if I triple x. So if I triple x one to get my second x, then I'm going to replace x two with three times x one. And we're going to see what happens. So if I actually square three times x one, I get nine times x one squared, okay? And I can divide x1 squared out of both of those um, because it does show up in the denominator of both. And I get that 9y1 equals y2. So what that means is the second y is going to be 9 times the first y. So if x is tripled, then y gets multiplied by 9, which makes sense because uh, 3 squared is 9. So now let's answer the blue question. What happens to x if y is multiplied by four? So I'm setting it up the same way as before, but now it is uh, y2 that is being replaced with four times y1, because that's what's happening. The second y is four times the first y, okay? And again, I can cross out the y1s. I can divide those out of each side of that equation and then I can cross multiply and I can get four times x1 squared equals x2 squared. And I can square root both sides to get that two times x1 is equal to x2. So what that means is the second x is only twice as big as the first x. So even though the y got multiplied by four uh, to get the second y, I only multiply the x by two to get the second x. So if y is multiplied by four, then x is doubled. All right, and we can use this as well as we used uh, just simple direct variation to find any missing values. I set up the proportion the same way, but I remember to include the exponents. So if y is proportional to x cubed and y is nine when x is two, then what is y going to equal when x is equal to three? So I set up my proportion and remember, uh, y is proportional to x cubed, so my x's on the bottom both have to be cubed. So uh, the first y was 9, the first x was 2, and the second x was 3, so I plug those values in. And I simplify, 2 cubed is 8, 3 cubed is 27, and then I cross multiply to solve, and I get that y would equal 30.375. And now if y was proportional to x squared, and I knew that y was equal to five when x was equal to four, what would x equal when y is 45? Setting up that proportion again, making sure that I square the x's because that's what the proportion is, and plugging in what I know. The first y was five, the first x was four, the second y was 45, and I need to know the first x. So four squared is 16, nothing else needs to be simplified, but I can cross multiply and get that x squared would equal 144. 
Um, so x would have to be 12 for that. I know that when you're solving a square, um, you would get plus or minus 12 um, as your values for x, but if you're looking at that proportion, all of the values are positive. So it doesn't make sense for x to equal negative 12 in this case. All right, so that is uh, using direct variation with powers. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know and I will see you tomorrow.